Welcome to my lecture online. So here is the second attempt at solving a very similar problem to the problem that we thought was actually incorrect. And now that I'm trying to think through the problem a little bit more, maybe the initial problem was correct. After all, well, we'll figure it out. We're going to go one step at a time. So the next iteration of this problem where we have this cart on wheels being pushed, we have a block on top of it, there's no friction between that block and the big block, and then we have a pulley attached to the big block, a rope over that with another mass hanging down from it, but in this case instead of being in front of the object such that there will be an angle, now this is against the big block here and there's no friction between them so it's free to slide up up and down now there's no angle to the string will that make a difference what will be the force required to keep these two masses uh, stationary relative to the big block in such a way that the velocity downward is equal to zero so that's the key here can we make that happen and i thought about it some more and we'll, we'll get to the details of why I think this works, uh, but let's give it a try. Well, first of all, what we're going to do is realize that this here can be called tension 1, and here this can be called tension 2, and again, if there's no mass to that pulley and there's no friction there, so assume a massless pulley and a frictionless pulley, then those two tensions must be equal. So we could say that tension 1 must equal tension 2. And then we could take a look at this and say, well, what is the tension on there? Well, the tension can be determined by realizing that there's the force of gravity pulling down. This is M2G. And so if this mass is stationary, not going up or down, but staying right in place, then we know that T2 must be equal to M2G. We also know that T1 must be equal to the force that will accelerate this mass at the acceleration of A. So in other words, T1 becomes M1A and T2 has to become M2G. And therefore, when we solve this for A, we can say that A is equal to M2 divided by M1 times G. Of course, we know what these masses are. M2 is equal to 4 kilograms. M1 is equal to 5 kilograms. And multiply times G, so end up with 0.8 G. And let's see here quickly, what's that equal to? 9.8 times 0.8, and we get 7.84. Now notice if we think of this as a free body diagram, there's different ways of looking at it. So here we can take this and draw a little free body diagram. And so the question would be, well, why is that block not going down? Right? The, the acceleration due to gravity will cause this mass to go downward and would eventually pull this mass forward. Now, let's take a look here and let's see what we can do if we draw a free body diagram. And here we have a 4 kilogram mass and then we have the force acting downward, which is the M2G. And now we have a tension acting upward. We call that tension 2. Notice that this was M2, and clearly, if those two forces are equal to each other, that block is not going to go down. We can also take a look at the second block, this block right here. And notice we have, this is M1, it is a five kilogram block. And we have the tension here, we call that tension one, which is equal to tension two. And of course, if this block is going to accelerate to the right, acceleration A, so we have an acceleration A in this direction, then we know that tension 1 must equal the force required to accelerate this forward at acceleration A, and that would be equal to, uh, that would be equal to M1A. There we go. And of course, we know that those two must be equal to each other, so therefore this is equal to M2G. So we can simply look at that with a free body diagram, we can see that there's a force pulling it to the right equal to T1, and that must be equal to the force required to accelerate it at acceleration A. And so what prevents this block from going down? Well, if we can keep this block in place with this big block here, then when this accelerates at acceleration, whatever the acceleration is, A in this case would be 8 tenths of G, if this block accelerates at 8 tenths g, then those will be stay, stay in the same place, 
and we can then maintain the correct tensions to prevent this from falling down. So that seems to work. But then the question is, well, how does that block M1 get pulled to the right? Because after all, this force is acting downward, this force is acting this word, but how does that work? Well, it turns out when we take a closer look at what happens at the pulley, this rope is very tight around the pulley. It pushes against the pulley, and then the pulley pushes back, and those forces will be per perpendicular to the surface. So some of these forces will actually act in this direction, which means that the pulley will push this whole thing to the right, which causes this block, M1, then to be pulled along with it. So that's how that force is transferred to block M1 to get it to pull, push to the right. And that since that pulley is attached to the big block, and the big block is pushed with force F, this F accelerates this big block, this block which is leaning against it, and this block due to the forces on the pulley. So now everything seems to make sense. Therefore, we can now say that the force applied is equal to the mass total times acceleration. In this case, force is equal to the sum of all the masses, 21 uh, plus 4 plus 5 kilograms, multiplied times acceleration of 7.84 meters per second squared. And so therefore, the force required in this case would be, that's 30, that's uh, times 30, and we get 235.2 newtons, 235.2 newtons. So notice the setup is very similar to the previous problem with the difference is that this did not have any room to swing back and forth so it's smack up against this block and therefore with the same masses and a force pushing in this direction instead of the 392 newtons required in the previous problem you only need 235.2 newtons because the acceleration is far smaller than what's required with a hanging weight that was able to swing back and forth. So interestingly enough, with the very same setup except the one little block up against the big block, we need a lot less force to accelerate it in order to make sure that those don't move. And that is how it's done. Well, like I said, the first problem we did, the first repeat problem, we had it hanging away from the block so that it could swing back and forth. Under those circumstances, you cannot have the hanging block to be equal in mass to the block on top. But if the block is being pushed against the big block like this, then apparently it might work and definitely it needs less force in order to accelerate the whole system because you don't need to accelerate quite as fast. So the next time we're going to do this problem again, now we're going to make the two masses equal to each other and then maybe we'll realize that the original problem was perfectly fine to begin with. So we'll, we'll take a look and see if we do find the problem in that initial problem. So, so this was an equality you did before? No, it's slightly different. So now we're going to go to the same type of problem we did before. Yeah. Okay.